Go watch this. I'm gonna spoil the shit. Go watch it. Oh, minus Fox, right? So we're gonna have a Fox. God, one, I love, I love, <laughs> I love these little deer fox things. And also, I'm a hundred percent sure because I, I tried googling this at one point, and I might do this before I even watch this show. Before I watch this, I'm a hundred percent thinking fairies are the are like the opposite equivalent of dragons. Like, if you really think about it, like. Fairies are usually small humanoid characters with insectoid wings, mostly focusing on magic, mostly focusing on magical abilities and stuff like that. Where dragons are more giant reptilian creatures with mammal-like bat wings, and are more of a physical thing. Where fairies will mess you up magically, uh, dragons will mess you up physically. Like, <laughs> I. God, I'd probably rather still deal with a dragon. <laughs> Cause God. Alright, so if you don't know how to do this, hey, if you didn't first that video you ever seen of mine, hey, I'm gonna watch the trailer. I've already seen the show, but I'm gonna watch the trailer real quick because I wanna see kind of what the trailer says or gives off. Cause I haven't seen the trailers for it. I've seen the season. Um, but I wanna see how the trailer kinda gives off because I kinda wanna see like what bullets I dodge. Because going into this season blind, holy shit. Alright, let's just begin in three, two. I've been thinking about you lots in these interesting times. I miss Best you Auntie Astrid. Dearly. Hope I'll be seeing you soon. The claim series comes to an end. By God, I, and I, I, I don't want it to. God, my God, can I? Oh my God, I just started this freaking trailer. I just want to say this. By God, I don't want this show to end. Because, okay, I love The Owl House. Again, I love The Owl House. And I say, like, that show, beginning to end, very damn good. And, like, has a really good-ass ending that leaves it open to a bunch of new stories that could still be told and could be continued later. Which is great, especially because it got, kind of got gypped for a season three. And then you have something like uh, Kipo, which I love that show. D don't get me wrong. I love goddamn Kipo. That was, one of my, that was my number one before The Owl House. That was right. One of my that's one of my top favorite shows. Another Netflix one too. Another sleeper too. I don't think a lot of people watched that show. Really good. I will say the ending did kind of stumble for me. And I know. Go back to my review. I talked. I said like you know I liked it and all that. And I did. But it's it, 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 out of like these endings, they really stumbled. By God, Hilda. By God, like holy shit. Okay, I'll I'll get into it. But oh my God. Oh yeah, Joanna's a badass. God, that scene is seen. I think this might be their last night before they leave this world forever. Wow, hold on. Dad? Wait, is there, is there, is there hey. The man over there looked like Dad, so I thought maybe. You always. Oh my God. Okay, I'm so okay. I okay. I'm 100% happy I didn't see this because I would have picked up. I would have picked that up. Like that, so freaking quick. In ten years, I will return. Okay, yeah, I'm so and happy. You will give the girl to me. Okay, yeah, I'm 100% happy I didn't see the trailer. I'm so happy I didn't. I would have picked up on all this so damn quick. I know that's like me tooting my own horn, but that's just me because I... I will look at a story and see every goddamn, th every last bit of little detail that they just gave right now. I could kind of like pull shit together and come up with a theory of what the hell was going to happen. So I just, and like if I wasn't at least somewhat right, I would have been kind of right. I want to see, but like I'll, 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 I'll bring it up because they, they are leaving a major part out of this trailer so far, but they've also given a lot away. Moms always know what to do. What happened to you guys? <laughs> Hilda, the final season, December 7th. Oh, I'm very late. 
Oh, man. Okay, I also kind of would have been a little pissed if this was the last shot you showed me. I'd be like, oh, my God. Because this damn bird has been gone for so long. <laughs> okay. So, I love... So, okay. The writing on this show is goddamn amazing. Down to character designs are so damn good. And, again, that's also the reason why I don't... I, I'm happy I kind of didn't watch this a little bit. Man. I probably wouldn't have gotten a hundred percent right now. I'm thinking about it because I would have looked at this. I would have been like, eh, I don't know. Like I, I, I yeah, maybe I probably would have caught something because this, this, uh, oh God, if they showed his dad, her dad, actually, I could probably Google. I could probably Google it really quickly. But okay, so the character designs in this show are done very intentionally and are done to extremely good degree for telling the story down to multiple down to certain creatures down to like and like even like how they kind of slowly hint at things like for example we learn about auntie astrid which usually aunt is you know the mom's sister unless she's a but joanna apparently doesn't have a sister so we can only assume that Either she's not actually related to Hilda, because, you know, a Hispanic family. Oh, that's my aunt. That's actually my cousin. That's my aunt. That's actually just a good friend. Whatever. But I don't think that's the case here. But then, but, you know, you would go along the idea of, okay, she maybe she's a, a second aunt to Hilda. So she's actually Joanne's, uh, Joanne's aunt. So then makes her the... Sister to either Joanne's mother or father. I'm like, okay, that's that's int okay, that's cool. And then you have um when you eventually see uh let me see, I'll just Google it. No, it's not him. But it's funny because the show kind of acknowledges that that theory too. Wait a minute. Wait, that's her? Ellie voices her? Oh shit! I didn't know that. That makes sense. I'm surprised I didn't pick that up when watching. Uh, um, when I was watching that. Uh, when I was watching. Uh, uh, Once upon a time. Holy shit! Let me see. Hilda. Is it? I think it's Anders. There we go. When we see Hilda's dad. <laughs> and you're just like, hold on a minute. <laughs> Joanna has Joanna has brown hair. Her dad has blonde hair. Hilda has blue hair. S mm, something's wrong. <laughs> something's wrong. I can feel it. Uh, so you're you're immediately like, as soon as that reveal has happened, immediately, as soon as that reveal happened. There was, like, thoughts going in my head. It was like, I'm like, oh my god, I feel like this show is just giving me a mystery right now. Like, I don't feel, I feel like it's, I don't feel like it's not ten intentional. I think it's intentional that they have both parents and neither of them have blue hair that Ryan to Hilda. Which I was like, okay. I'm like, what the hell is going on here? That was the beginning. That was the beginning of the show. Like, oh my god, okay. Um... Well, yeah, well, kind of in the beginning. Like, what episode was that? I can't even remember. I I, I watched these between, like, two days because I don't really have access to Netflix. There's a whole bunch of stuff. Oh, right. No, 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 no. The show actually started with them meet, going to Tofton and meeting with uh, Auntie Astrid here. Which, again, d d the kind of going in part with uh, the idea of, uh, of character designs for this. Like, all character designs are intentional. Auntie Astrid looks a very very much actually twig should be actually over here i don't know why the drag i i put the two the dragon <laughs> well i know why because tempest is a badass but uh <laughs> um like it, it's intentional for her because she looks very much like hilda when i first saw her i'm like oh is that hilda's grandma it's like nope it's that's her aunt her second aunt and i'm like okay i'm looking at her like like she looks like Hilda. She she looks like an older Hilda. Like it would it surprise you? There was some time travel shit going on. There was a time travel episode. Don't get me, there was a time travel episode where um, Hilda goes through a tree that 
reaches through time and she goes to the past which I'm gonna say like now the trailer was doing a lot better when he said you know this might be their last day on earth and all this and if they would have just kept it kind of like that but maybe that would have been too whatever but like because Hilda does at one point go back in time but anyways let's just keep anyways so they visit Astrid at Toft at first I'll get I'll get to the giants I'll get to the giants these motherfuckers these motherfuckers, when they said that they left this world, I thought, oh, did they go through some magical portal? No, no, they didn't. That no, no, they didn't. And I was just like, I was like, what the hell? And I'm like, that, I, I, I guess that makes sense, but also I didn't expect that's how they left. <laughs> what? <laughs> but, okay, so they visit Auntie, Auntie Astrid at Tofton, which. One, there's like, it's it's kind of cool because it's kind of like, because uh, first off, I was looking at Tofton because, like, Tofton is kind of similar to Trollberg where their, like, land or, like, that area is tied to a set of magical creatures where, you, where in Trollberg, obviously, it's tied to trolls. Tofton, it's tied to fairies. But fairies here are apparently, like, barely are are just legends they don't know them or like you know there's only legends passed down about them and usually it's kind of the stereotype, thing, the stereotype of you know fairy wings and all that stuff although i do love one when hilda's going around asking about uh fairies uh and she gets like different and like oh they're this big they're tiny they're smart they're all these things and they go like oh but we call them the good neighbors they go why do you call them the good neighbors? The same reason why you say good boy when a dog's about to bite you. I'm like, oh shit, okay. And also, like, there's even kind of their own woodman who, who, uh, but instead of, like, woodman coming up to Hilda, Hilda and Joanna's house, it's uh, a small little puka who is very bad at transforming who comes to Astrid's house to um ask for uh to ask for things and let me tell you these these writers i don't want to call them a bad word <laughs> these jerks that's as bad i'm gonna get like these i don't know i could go worse i don't want to though these guys stabbed me in the chest twice <laughs> And I'm like, you jerk, I'm like, you, you, oh my god, you, oh my god, I got, they stabbed me twice, and I freaking hate them, oh my god, I love it, like, oh my god, like, I, I, uh, the only time, like, I love the Owl House, as I've already said multiple times, and like, season, the, 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 the when Ida gets captured, the, is it, something of the witch, uh, I mean, he gets captured worms, something like that. That pain through my chest. Pain through my chest, and I'm like, holy shit. Like, the look on their face, I'm like, oh my god. And then, uh, again, like, every almost every season finale, there's like a pain through your chest with, with that show. It's really great. Like, but like, I was like, okay, how's this gonna happen next? And there's points in like stuff like, but like, I will say, and is where Amphibia did really, really good. Like, season one finale and season two finale, there are points... Season one finale specifically, though. Like, by God, when you... Spoilers, I guess. Like, going into that, and I thought a certain certain character was going to die at one point. I'm like, oh my God, does this show have the balls to do it? <laughs> like, it's the point where it's like, on one hand, I kind of want to see them go through with it. But on the other hand, oh my God, it's going to kill me if you do it. Like, I'm sorry, it's going to be awful. I'm like, oh my God. And, and they did it. And then, 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 then like, you know, it's, you're like, oh God, you take a breath. This show did that fucking twice at the very end of the damn show. And it's, and it, it oh God, it, that's that, oh God, that hurt. But in any case, they go to Tofton and Hilda tries to find out about fairies. And like, here's the thing. Because I, I, I learned this from another, because I, I was at uh, my uncle before he, my uncle before he became, well, no, he was always an asshole, but before I just completely cut him off and didn't give a shit about him, um, he, he took me to, like, his friend's place where, like, I, I don't know if they're an electrical, I don't know, he, it was some dude who worked for the government, don't ask me, apparently he's the guy who makes up plans for zombie apocalypse shit to happen. 
take that information with what you will. Um, you own a shit ton of land, and they're talking. I'm bored out of my mind, so I just start stacking rocks. Just start stacking rocks that are out and like out there at the point. And he got. He's like, don't do that. Like, you know, it's bad luck to knock those over. And then later, I find out about fairy mounds or, or, or fairy stones, where they stack the rocks up together. That's a sign of fairies or witchcraft, either or. And I'm just like, oh, okay. I found out. I didn't find out there, but I found out about that later. So FYI, I'm, I'm not gonna knock over any rocks. I don't want to piss off the fairies because, by God, fairies are goddamn terrifying, and this show shows it a lot. Like, so, but anyways, Hilda and her, her friends find out after they mess with a fairy mound and take all uh, some protective charms, which I'm just like, they're twigs stuck, tied together with all this shit. Stop, stop touching them. Stop touching them. <laughs> I'm like, even me, I'm just like, nope, nope, don't mess with that shit. Nope, nope, do not mess with that shit. That is a charm. That is a charm. You don't mess with charms. <laughs> but they do. And also, you see, she has a wood stick in her hand. But... They mess with charms, and uh, her, Hilda, it, Frida, and uh, freaking, uh, I wrote his name down, but I keep freaking remember forgetting it. Uh, David. They, they get, they suddenly find themselves in a misty world, and filled with one-eyed uh, mushroom creatures coming after them. Astrid. And then eventually, like, Joanna Asher had to dig a hole and, di and pull them out of the fairy mound, which is the big-ass hill. And I'm just like, were they just buried alive? I'm like, were they just buried alive? And it's just like, they just happened to wander into fairy, fairy, like, or at least the, the in-between of fairy, like the borderlands of fairy country. And I'm just like, what the shit? <laughs> I'm like, what? <laughs> I'm sorry, excuse me, come back. Because here's the thing too, and I, I, I want to equate this, I want to equate dealing with fairies in the same way as the falling and like some of my fears. Like, here's the thing, I'm afraid of heights. But also I learned, like working at a haunted house, funny enough, I learned at, uh, working at a haunted house that uh, I am afraid of heights and I learned this when they told us to stand on a forklift, just like the bars of it, so they can lift us up about a few stories high up so we can grab shit and put it on the forklift. And I realized I would rather climb down than stand on that forklift because of my fear of heights. Because it, it's it's the idea of, I guess, like, I have a con more control over myself when I'm climbing down. So, like, the idea of my fear of heights is it's uncontrollable once you fall off the edge. Once you fall off the edge, you're screwed and you're dead like i guess that's probably like my why, where my fear of heights kind of comes from and you know the whole call of the abyss but and i say and i and i'm and the reason why i'm bringing this up is because like i got that same damn fear when watching this show when every time they got like they just so randomly walk into fairy country it's just like it just just happens and i'm like what the hell like oh my god like it's terrifying, the idea that you could just walk around the bend and you're just in a land of mist. And you're just trapped there, like, forever. It's like, holy shit. I, like, that's what it's kind of like. Like, and, like, that's the thing, too. Like, this show also does not skip out on any of the fairy lore. Like, any of the fairy, like, the actual fairy lore. Like, you know, oh, you know, if you say you don't believe, they die. Or, you know, they're all just nice, happy, friendly. No, they kidnap children. <laughs> they kidnap children. They kidnap people, children. There's changelings. There's, like, oh, like, I'm like, oh, my God. Like, holy shit. They follow you everywhere. Like, holy shit. Okay. But anyways, so, I am, God, I don't know where to start with this show. But, they go to Tofton, and I'm like, oh, so it's like, I think the first two episodes are in Tofton. I thought, like, oh, is the entire season going to be in Tofton? I'm like, that kind of sucks. I like Trollberg. It'd be cool to see Trollberg for the last season. No, no, no. Because this show... I don't know what the hell... That, this show has magic, some shit. I have no idea. Every episode of this felt like an hour long. And I say that not in like the idea of like, oh my God, they dragged. I say it in the sense of like, I was always like 
like you feel like you there was you had an entire goddamn stressful adventure <laughs> by the end <laughs> and it's like holy shit like it is amazing how good it is but um But yeah, and like like every episode, like mind you, there are some little tweaks because I know like the I I don't know if the books ever covered this part of like these the stories. I know there's some things that are closer to the book, some that are not. Like the hound one was in the books, but I don't I don't know if this whole thing was. Someone has someone would have to tell me. But like I think Frida becoming a witch is not in the books. But they do at least tie it around in this, though they, she does like say like, I have taken a solemn oath to never use magic unless, you know, unless like I under great distress or whatever. I'm like, okay, that's the reason why you're not going to be using magic this season. I get it. Um, that being said, like this, then again, like I, I, God, I'm trying to think of all the ways, I'm trying to think of the ways of this, like you, you do after that thing, because it sets up the whole thing. Like Joanna brings up stuff like that. She doesn't really remember why she left. Tofton, she doesn't really remember much about her parents and like that's a running thing that's kind of brought up and again there's certain things that are tied to stuff like hold on like this i'll bring that up later but there's stuff like uh like i said about character design wise this thing this thing where we see first off hilda and her mom at one point after getting a new car and mom kind of feeling bad after like Hilda's dad left it turns out he got kidnapped um by fairies um he, like like they go they go on their own little camping trip have together and by god do I not by god do I love like every time the uh that family like just interacts with each other I, I love it so much um but we they go to a a like little pond that Joanna remembers. It's like and Hilda's like, did did you live like did you did you come here once with your mom and dad and and she Joanna's I I don't remember. You think I would? Because she's been drawing it, and Hilda pulls up a net that has a bunch of charms on it, and she's like, oh look at this weird ass net. And I'm like, by God, girl, you just spent the last episode where she time traveled to get the wood to make a uh a charm to protect herself because ever since tofton she's kind of worried about fairies coming after her because you know she kind of got kidnapped for a second and was buried alive under a fairy mound um and uh god i'm trying to think now i'm sorry and so just like, do do do, we're gonna pull this char this charm filled net off and releases this thing, which again, tying to like the character designs. This thing, though, it does not want to. It it does not want to be. Uh, how did it put it? Uh, prefers not to be labeled. Prefers not to be labeled. But this, I'll say, fey creature who is part frog part spider which by god i never thought about that combination but also by god was this monster not freaking terrifying um immediately showing a few things one that the charms were stealing it away so it's probably fairy related and two like it's a half one it's a half frog half spider creature it's almost like you know another half one thing half other creature that's been in this show this whole time and i'm just like only till the end i'm like oh shit then i not realize that like it is like it like it it, it it's real time and also as soon as i also like so, as soon as they, they brought the mom and stuff and then also those charms i was thinking like okay i think i kind of see where the story's going with joanna a little bit i was like i, I was kind of figuring it out um, also, I will say this is probably a really good scene where, like, it looks like she, spoilers, I guess, Joanna's about to let Hilda go, but she's like, I'm not letting you go, and then straight gets, straight gets eaten. 
Like, this, uh, this isn't like a dream sequence. Straight get eaten. But it gives you a, they give you another clue, which again, I like. Like, this show knows how to set up a mystery and then also slowly give out the details to the audience so they can slowly figure it out. Because this thing eventually does. Th also, I do like the edit that makes it look like they just came out of it from that point. But he eventually throws them up and goes. He eventually throws them up and goes, no, too too hum too human tasting. Because I because you're human, we can be friends. I was like, I, like as soon as he said that, I'm like, hold on too human tasting which means they taste like something else also which i'm like joanna's a fairy <laughs> hilda's a fairy spoilers it's big major spoilers major spoilers i was like holy shit holy shit like i'm like they're fairies and i'm thinking like how like like are they full and i'm like and i'm thinking in my head like i bet one of the grandparents hair is blue i bet one of the grandparents hair is blue and that's why I'm saying, like, uh, again, also, I, let me just say right now, on that Spider Frog episode, Joanna pull, Joanna goes, like, Evil Dead with, like, Hacksaw and just cuts through these webbings and all that shit. And, like, that's a bad, that was a badass episode. But, yeah, like, straight. Turns out, like, there, there's some, uh, yeah, fairy country, which also I will say right now, um, if this is in the multiverse, Joanna is the daughter of Fairy Rick Sanchez from Rick and Morty. But he's actually a good dad in this universe. God, like, but also like other things that they kind of set up too. Like when she's, when uh, Auntie Astrid is eventually putting the charms around Again, to seal away the fairy mound, um, she uses a recording of someone paying up, playing some pan flutes. And later on during the frog episode, we see Joanna playing those pan flutes. It's like, okay, so that was Joanna on the recording. Like, this show knows how to set up really good myth, like the really good mystery and really pays off. Really, like, that's probably like the reason why, like, um, I don't know, maybe I have to rewatch stuff like Gravity Falls or something. But, I don't know, like, maybe, I don't know, maybe because yeah, I was always behind, I don't know, I don't know. Gravity Falls Mystery, it never, I guess, caught me that much, I guess. I don't know, maybe I wasn't at the point where I was right now with, like, you know, theorizing and shit. At least not for, like, that stuff. But then, like, Amphibia, like, that show took way too long. That show took way too long to dwell out the mysteries. Or to deal out like answers or stuff like that. It waited too long and like spaced it too far in between those things. And it, it, it made me annoyed and the reason why Amphibia isn't one of my favorites. I mean, one of the major reasons why. Owl House, that did, it, that did it pretty well. Like that was able to give out little mysteries and not add more mysteries to things. Or resolve things a lot quickly. Like it wasn't like, it, like yeah, like it was resolving more quickly. This one... Like, was, was season one was able to dull all these mysteries out. Like, this one big-ass mystery out. And dull, each episode pretty much gives, like, a hint at something. That something is going to happen. Something is going to tie in with Joanna's parents or something like that. Like, it's legitimately, like, really good. This is freaking great. And, yeah, yeah. These spoilers again. It's big spoilers. You know, uh... Apparently, yeah, see, here's Rick Sanchez. <laughs> Baby Joanna. And, like, there's things, like, God, I, I'm, I, I kind of feel bad saying it, like, spoiling now. Like, I, I definitely say go watch this. Go watch it yourself. I'll, I'll probably say that, I'll probably put it in the beginning of the Go watch this. I'm going to spoil the shit. Go watch it. Apparently, I'll take this and put it there. And now I'm mad at myself later when I'm editing this. Because then I got to be like, well, shit. All right. All right. Anyways. Um. God, I took so many notes. Guy, friend, could deaf hear them with his headphones. Uh, Hilda not wanting weird stuff. Oh, yeah, because there was a whole episode with, like, a talking with a fish illusion guy. 
Um, which, that episode was fine. Like, pretty much the Sparrows, the, uh, Hilda with her Sparrow Scouts and, uh, yeah, right here. Right here, where they meet this guy, and, like, he tries to trap them in, like, the, like, a cave, so he could be, like, the, pretty much, like, give shows to them forever. Uh, this, they've got a new friend who doesn't appear again, I think, to, like, probably the very end. Which, I gotta be... I kinda hope the book... I hope the books kinda continue after the show a little bit, because... There's so many more stories you could tell with this world. Because that's the thing, too. And again, that's the one thing I also really love about this show, too. Like, this show always has kind of almost like a chill chillness to it. But also, like I've said before, it feels like summer... Like, the best way I can describe it is it feels like summer vacation. Like, even like all this. Like, it's very much yellowish colors, which gives you a more summer-esque feel. But not like a bad yellow too like you know there's something with like a yellow tint over it i don't know it's just like a almost like a calming it's calming but like it gives you like that warm sense of summer i don't know what it is it's but it it feels beautiful and then the music helps and then like there's there's a bunch of little side missions in between like again the whole fish one there's this one where again hilda goes back in time where we're just trying to get a piece of wood for her charm, and then Woodman's there trying to fix the tree. It turns out, uh, when it's saber tooth squirrel, which again, immediately you're like, why saber tooth squirrel? So this tree connects through time. It immediately takes Hilda to, um, what she thinks is another timeline because the the Woodman says like, this is the uh, because like Hilda's like, I don't want to mess with time because last time I did that, uh, you know, I kind of screwed everything up. And Woodman goes, no, 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 no. This tree actually connects you to the multiverse. And I'm just like, okay, it's the Hildaverse? All right. Um, but turns out, no, it actually was the past because the tree kind of gets burned down. And Hilda, and then, like, the tree's burning the past. Like, which Hilda's like, wait, what? Wait, what? You're like, I thought that didn't count. And the tree man's like, well, either the tree is a major constant between the multiverse. Or that was another tree, and I was wrong. This actually does take you to the past. <laughs> it's like, which I guess you could say because Hilda didn't know the past. Like it wasn't like she was trying to change the future. Therefore, it was allowed to happen. Or you could say it it was did link to a multiverse thing, but it's because this Hilda went to a timeline of another Hilda and then burned the tree down. In that one it destroyed the tree in that one, and thus therefore, and then they kind of went back. Anyways, um, beside the point, uh, Hilda does go back in time. It's a, the to age of giants where this kid here's the giant slayer whose uh, family apparently was killed after a giant stepped on his home, which he's like, which he, he even goes to one point, I would never step on someone's home. Hilda's like, oh, you have. And he looks at a little fairy, little elves and stuff. And I'm like, oh, that's actually a really, I never really knew that, that I don't, I don't think I really thought of that connection there for a second. Cause like the first, I think it's like the first episode. I'm like, oh, but the giants, this shows like the day the giants pretty much leave after the giant slayer wants to try to kill uh, the giants. And the giants like, well, we're just going to leave because this world hates us. And Hilda tries to make them stay, tries to change the future for this world, this version of the world, which she didn't know was hers. But the giants, like, it's not just these people you have to convince. It's all of them because they're always going to hate us or so, like that. I'm like, oh, damn, that's sad. And how they leave the Earth, again, I didn't expect it, was they just straight jump off the planet. They're just like, well, my people need me. <laughs> and just jump off. And I'm just like, what the hell? I was like, okay. I'm like, it's weird. Like, it makes sense. I, I always thought, like, when they said the giants left, I thought it was like, oh, the giants, went, like, I don't know, opened a magic portal and went through. No, no, no. The giants just left. And they're just like, okay. <laughs> All right. Jesus. Also, I feel like giants and trolls 
must be connected in some way. Because, like, there's this giant here that looks kind of like a troll. So, like, and also, like, if anything, I, I wonder if, because, God, they never, God, there there has to be, they have to continue this. Because that's the thing, too, like, we, we learn, we learn, because, like, again, like, we bring up, I brought up the fairies and stuff, and, like, that's a major part of, part of this, like, the fairy, like, the major part of this, the fairies, and, like, eventually even Hilda, spoilers again, going to fairyland, going to the fairy world, and, and, and eventually meeting her grandparents, which I was like, oh shit! And like you, you do know at one point where like Hilda's going through. She he meet, she suddenly meets a brown haired girl with a little hood, and I'm just like, that that's Joanna. That's 100 percent Joanna. That's Joanna. The fairyland's messing with shit, and there's stuff like the fairy world was rotting too, and like we never really got an answer on why it was rotting. I guess because like it just being like it, the world just died. I don't know. Like there's so many different stories you could tell. And there's stuff like this. Because I, mind you, I, I kind of got a little spoiled. Because I was like, oh yeah, I was like, and like it was before this, I'm like, I was thinking of like, uh, of, uh, of Twig. And I was like, I was like, I can't remember like, like if, I, I, mean, I forgot what the hell the reason was. Something about, it was, it was something about Twig that I wanted to, I wanted to get a recap. And I was reading it and at one point it said, yeah, they try and cross into the Fey world. I'm like, I'm gonna stop reading the Wikipedia now. <laughs> like, I'm like, I'm sure that won't tie into anything. It ties into things. Which also, this was cool when uh, Hil uh, not Hilda Frida gave <coughs> gave Twig a bit of a boost for him to then howl and like, fuck yeah. And then that army of <coughs> army of deer foxes versus the army of fairies was like, hell yeah. Oh my! Oh my! Oh my God! Like it was so good, and like, God, this shows. And like, then there's so many heartbreaking things, like when Hild, when Hilda's dad leaves, and you know she's trying to look for him. And mind you, there is an episode where like Frida's trying to get the the nest. Is it the nest? Like together, so they could stop stealing from each other and stuff like that. While that's also going on, Hilda is like handing out flyers, trying to find her dad, and. <clears throat> after like th she's getting like radio signals which Hild which god this show which Hilda's like I think this is my dad I think this is my dad trying to contact me I think my dad trying to contact me through the radio and like they try to decipher it like it took her days cipher it and eventually one of the nests steal the the radio and when she finally sees it in like the town meeting with the nests that Frida sets up, she tries to take it back, and that just starts a whole thing fight. Frida kind of gets mad at her, but at least doesn't like fully snap at her though. But I'm like, and also I'm just thinking like, okay, yes, I get it. You were trying to help the nest, but also that same note, the hill was trying to find her dad, and then the reveal that it quote unquote wasn't Hilda's dad, but it was actually Gail, which I think if I remember correctly, was she the weather lady, and she was messing with like. The weather clouds, if I remember correctly. I can't remember. It's been a minute since I've seen season two of Hilda. I gotta rewatch the whole series now. But uh Like she she's taking a message. I remember it, or was it that she was messing with the nest? I remember she gets like pulled through like nest portals or in between portals, if I remember her, and then she just wakes up somewhere random. And she wakes up and uh like it's her on the radio, but then later on, uh Tantu goes like, oh, hold on. I'm trying to listen to my favorite radio show about a, a dad trying to find his daughter. And he goes, what? And he goes, yeah. And then it's Gail. He goes, here's my co-host. And then it's Hilda's dad. And he was like, what the fuck? He was like, what? So I'm like, okay. So you you pulled the rug out. You pulled the rug out. I was like, oh my God, it's just this lady. It's just this lady. And Hilda was like, all right, like, oh, I'm done with this. Only then flip it out, like, oh no, it is her dad's too. I'm like, oh my God. But that wasn't the the, the breaking part. Because the, Hilda, for a second, uh, Hilda, for also FYI, I did spoilers too. Like, we do find out, like, when they, like, well, Hilda eventually, for the second time, gets kidnapped to a magical world. And finds out and that she is then another creature entirely. <laughs> because just like, again, just like the 
she, she wakes up in in troll land as a troll. It's like okay, now she wakes up in fairyland, and she finds out her grandparents, or at least one of her grandparents, is a fairy, making Joanna a half fairy, making uh Hilda a quarter fairy, and also she again blue hair. So, like, that's where Hilda gets her blue hair from. But <laughs> she's a fa- she's a fairy, which I love that she's like, I'm a fairy, I'm a fairy! And I'm like, by God, go back 20-something years and that would take on a whole different meaning or people would take that completely different. But even then, still, like, yeah, I mean, hell yeah. Maybe I'm a fairy. My hair's silver. <laughs> but <laughs> Joy. <laughs> Jo, uh, yeah, Joanna turns out that as a baby, she was, she got like some kind of unearthly sickness, which I think was actually part of fairy lore too. Um, and they make a deal with like the fairy queen or the Isle of the Fairy itself. And the fairy says like, you know, I will heal her, but in 10 years, you got to give her to us because fairies just got to steal babies, I guess. Um... They do it set, however, Joanna's parents do make a deal instead. Instead of giving up their baby, they give themselves up, letting Joanna live her life. Astrid is kind of, Astrid, who is actually a fairy also, um, and the brother of uh, Hilda's grand, uh, the sister of Hilda's uh, grandpa, uh, stays, stays, uh, in the human world to take care of uh, Joanna and pretty much eventually when they meet up in the fairy world uh, they're pretty much now stuck there and you know they re- they re- they rejuvenate Joanna's memories they kind of have like a little bit of a family get together again and like I will say like Hilda Emily is like I'm gonna go talk with the, the head fairy and like sort this shit out I want to go home because, like, even, like, everything from, like, uh, like, that's the thing, too, like, that's very, like, kind of traumatic <laughs> is, uh, because Hilda goes to the fairy world to get her dad, but, uh, this isn't exactly, this is a dream, which is still terrifying. When she gets dragged, when she gets dragged in, uh, she, like, like Joanna, like when Joanna finds out where Hilda Hilda went to go get her dad, she basically runs the Tofton at one point, and Hilda she feel every time Hilda pulls out the charms or breaks them, both Astrid and Joanna are like like they're like feeling pain. Like, oh, what the hell? Um, and eventually, like Frida and uh, Frida and David try to block Joanna. Like, no, 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 like. We have to leave Hilda in the hill because he, she's trying to get her dad. And when she messages on the walkie, we'll get her out. Joanna's like, screw that, ran in. And so when Hilda and her dad come out, they're like, where's where's mom? And she's like, she went in after you. Hilda jumped back in when the portal was still open. Because Fried also used her magic to hold the portal open. And the fairy magic came back like, oh, little witch, you think you're strong. <laughs> no. <laughs> Fairies came and slapped her. <laughs> it's like, nah, get the hell out. <laughs> like, oh, cute. You just learned magic. We've been doing this for eons. <laughs> get the hell out of here. <laughs> Knocked Frida out for a few days. I was like, damn. Um, but Hilda goes there. Goes through Fairyland with young Joanna. Dances with her fairy people. Eventually finds the dad. You know, whole thing. Astrid just teleports back. Says everything and like, oh god, I'm trying to think. And these, and pretty much like you know, like they felt like we're we're trapped here now. We can't go. And Joanna in what half doesn't want to try to leave because she wants to she wants to stay with her parents. She hasn't she hasn't seen them in I don't know twenty something years probably. Actually, maybe ten years. I'm trying to think because Hilda is young, and Joanna could be like. Joanna could be like late, th- early to late thirties, still. I don't know. Um, but 
they stay there. Uh, Hilda's obviously like, uh, no, I want to go home. <laughs> and the thing is, too, like, Joanna... And it is kind of cool because they do kind of tie into the idea that both Joanna and Hilda... So, some of the reasons why they're so drawn to nature and all that is because they're part fairy. Because they like... Because, you know, it's, it's kind of part of their culture kind of thing. It's part of who they are. And I'm like, I like that. I kind of like that a lot. Um... God, and but like, but Hilda's like saying like, look, we stay in Fairyland. Like, there's nothing outside of this island. Like, we're stuck here forever. Nothing will ever change. And so Joanna and Hilda try to escape, and the island tries to take her back. And Twig, Twig, be, and the thing is, see, like when the when they go when Hilda goes back in the mound, the fairy mound just crumbles. So it's not digging her out anymore. She's trapped in there. She's trapped. And, like, her dad immediately just starts, like, digging as much as he can. Frida is knocked out. Dave is just trying to help Frida. Um, also does realize, like, a picture that wasn't there before is now there because the magic is gone. That was keeping everything hidden. Um, and uh, Twig, the ba Twig, the badass, he knew exactly, he knew exactly what he was what to do he knew exactly what to do because he somehow knew that yes because the the deer boxes can tr walk between worlds that howled and let and let her and let him walk between worlds. which also again i feel like i feel like the books probably don't cover the, i don't know someone who tell, reads the book please tell me but because I, I was again when I was reading Twig's little wiki thing about deer fox and stuff, because I just want to know what was. I can't remember exactly what I was trying to wonder about deer foxes. Um. Oh, like I, I think I was trying to look up if, if he was a prince. I can't remember. But like, they bring up about deer foxes. Like uh, you know they can travel between worlds. So, so he knew. He knew if he called down his people, they could. He could use it to travel to the fa fairy world, and they were able to, and they were able to save save Hilda and Joanna, and like, and while that's going on, Astrid went to like the Isle itself. Is like, I need you, like I'm demanding you take my life instead of Joanna's, because as long as the island has quote unquote hold over Joanna, she can't leave. And by God, did it not stab me when? They, when Hilda and them, after the the fo deer foxes save mother and daughter, and after the grandparents save, save, uh, save, save them too from falling, and lets them go back to the human world, when Joanna starts getting sick, and she starts turning and crying, like, I don't feel good, she kind of just falls over, and, and then when Frida and all them come, like, like, God, like, guys, and then like, Joanna and Joanna's just there and Hilda's covering Joanna's face and I'm like are you are you kidding me is Joanna dead is Joanna dead because I'm thinking like like they did introduce Hilda's father they this would be a way for this would be like you know him then her then moving in with her dad then like her dad being more in her life but also on that same note, like, I don't want Joanna to die. But then she suddenly starts getting better. And it's like, and I, right before that, she was talking to the fairy, the, 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 the fairy, whatever the hell this thing is, the spirit, the, the fairy queen and saying like, you know, you can't resist a blood oath. You can't resist that. Take my life and let Joanna go. And the fairy goes like, I like that deal. You see the hand grinching over. And I'm like, oh my god. And then, like, and then, because that's the thing, too. And they're like, oh, Auntie Astrid gave herself. And everyone's sad. And I'm like, that's sad. I'm like, aw. But then, because, again, that damn puka pops up. And, because, again, throughout this, whenever we see Astrid, that little puka's knocking at the door. Door opens. And, you know, the puka's asking, can I have this and that? And... Can I have this and that? Can I have this and that? And Ashley goes, no, go away. But then eventually gives him it anyways or something like that. And you just see the puka, sad, head on the door, just 
lightly knocking at the door. I'm, I'm getting teared up now because I'm like, fuck. I'm like, God damn it. I'm like, no, stop it. <laughs> I'm like, I'm like, I was already like, oh, well, that's sad. But, you know, Astrid did it to save Joanna. I'm like, that's still pretty good. But then just seeing that poor little puka knocking at the door. God, I'm going to cry. <laughs> little puka knocking at the door. Like, waiting, and, like, just the, like, the idea of, like, like, the Astrid was probably, like, it is probably his only friend, and, you know, it's constantly, it was, you know, it's, like, that's one of the ways to, like, that's one of the ways, like, you know, that, you know, them to talk about everything and stuff, and I'm, like, oh, my God, I'm, like, and, like, and he'll be going, like, anti-Astrid is going to be, not is it gonna be coming to the door anymore? I'm like, oh my god! And the puka looking sad, and then <laughs> the door opens, and it's goddamn Astrid. And I'm like, what the fuck? <laughs> I'm like, I hate like, these writers. Oh my god! You, you, how do you, you uppercut me twice? You, you jerks. I'm like, oh my god, just imagine that Puka knocking at the door waiting for his friend who's never coming back. I'm like, oh my god. Shit. Oh my god. Ugh. But yeah. God, ah, uh, shit. Oh god, I'm happy there's no light on my face. <sighs> shit. God. Oh my god, I'm... Oh my god, stop it. Stop thinking about it. But, yeah, like, oh my god. And then it turns out that Gale instead, like, kind of switched places. Because there's a whole thing with, like, the, the, these fairy watchtowers that pretty much let fairies kidnap people from the other side and bring them to fairy world. Because, again, that's something that fairies did. Like, like stuff like changelings and all this other stuff. I think that's what a puka is. Isn't a puka another word for changeling? Anyways. Um, but yeah, and I'm like, oh my god, I hate you so much. And I'm like, oh my god, I love it. And like, it was so sad. But I'm, god damn it. And then, pretty much, and, and Auntie Ashley kind of got kicked out. Kicked out of Fairyland. So she's back on the human world. And I guess then from that point on, like, you know, you know, everything kind of works out then. Because then, like, at the very end, you know, everyone's happy. They're all together. Uh, Hilda's dad moves into Trollberg. Uh, not with, like, them, but, like, moves into Trollberg. They didn't have to get together, which is pretty nice. Um, and, like, we see a certain Thunderbird come back. And he flies over everything, showing us, you know, everyone that's, like, every little adventure. I, I, I must have missed the dog. But, like, we see, like, every letter from the Rat King to the rats to, I think, the fish guy again to, like, ev like e e every, the elves, everything. Every last little thing of characters from the past, we see it all come back. And, like, they're having the, is it the annual Thunderbird thing? We see the mom and baby uh, troll, trolls. And Hilda, you know, jumps on him jumps on her friends back and they fly through the city again and ah oh god this show is just great like legitimately like this is like one of i probably put this right up there almost with, i actually i think i would put this with owl house like i'm trying to think is that blasphemy i'm like because i love the owl house i love the owl house but i love like i love hilda like that's the thing too like that's the thing, like, Molly McGee, and because that's the thing, Molly McGee, I love, I love The Ghost of Molly McGee, really damn good show, love that show a lot. That is a show that, that is a show that has such good comedic writing. Like, it, like, yeah, I am, I would always be surprised if people watch that show and they don't get some kind of laugh out of it, if they're actually paying attention to it. Like, because there's just, like, it'll, ha it has so many good, like, gut punches that are just like, you know, one ending line will just a sucker punch you with a joke. And it's so, and it's, it'll make you laugh. It's so great. This show, every episode, 
felt like an like it's like thirty minutes. I think like it's like thirty something minutes each episode, twenty something minutes each episode. Feels like an entire adventure happened. Like you would get like an entire little adventure in this, and it's and nothing that feels like it drags on for too long. Nothing like a story plot line that kind of just feels like oh well, we're good. So uh, mind you, like stuff like Steven Universe again, not the greatest, but. I do say like stuff like uh you know like Pearl and Garnet and patching up like when Pearl kind of was lying about the whole tower thing, um immediately that was good writing. Don't get me wrong, but some shows you know will go on certain tropes and drag it out forever, um and it gets annoying. Hilda Hilda only ever did that. Um, even like the longest like running kind of thing. And also, mind you, too, the, the grandparents were always watching Hilda. You always saw the hoods and everything. And I'm like, I'm, and you see, like, through, like, and you find out later it's because she's been watch, they've been watching her through the tower. I'm like, that's kind of neat. And, like, even at the end where you see, like, Hilda all together with her friends and she, and the, the fireworks go off and you see the shadows of the grandparents. And I'm like, oh, that's cool. Um, but. God, this show is so damn good. And mind you, also like, Owl, Owl, Owl Wolf Town, um, like partially a reason why I kind of a little bit of how I designed that city. And mind you, I, I probably like after I, I kind of designed I think after season one a little bit more, and then like season two, I really season two like I was like shit, I should have <laughs> should have done something else there, but I can I can work around it. Um, but uh. Owlf Town in my little own show thing, like it is slightly inspired by Trollberg. Like, it very much is. Like, I love, I, I love this city. I love the modern aesthetic of it, where it looks like almost like just any regular city. And mind you, it's it is in a point where like at the time, like you don't really know when it's kind of supposed to be taking place, which is good. I like the timelessness of it. But it has that summer, it has that beautiful feel to it, though. Owlf Town, uh, Owl Town. It does. It does not necessarily feel that way, but like this show has such a calming feel to it. It it feels. God, I'm trying to think of like the best way. Again, it feels like a summer's. It feels like not just a summer's day. It feels like a like a summer evening. Like when everything's starting to kind of wind down, the sun is starting to set, makes the world like kind of glow a little yellow. That's what this world. That's what hilda like the show feels like the, from the art to just how it feels the music always being kind of slightly calming and stuff like that even when like it's adventures there's still like a bit of calmingness kind of thing kind of a little to it like like even like right now if you look at this like yeah it's dark and it's nighttime but it still has that golden glow on the buildings and everything it's it's so good like holy shit is it so good and again, like this show also knows how to do fear, because again, every I think every almost everything that happened with the fairies or with that with the 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 fake creature that's half frog half spider, like that shit was terrifying. <laughs> like that that's that half that fake creature is terrifying when it's just crawling like webbing people up and saying I'm gonna eat them, and when he actually does eat them, but it, and God, it's so good. And again. The idea of, and like, it, it doesn't shy away from actual fairy lore, which, yeah, they kidnap children. Yeah, they kidnap people and drag them to fairy world. Um, the only thing that I was like kind of got a little bit concerned was at one point with Hilda and uh, Joanna, little Joanna, were eating fruit from fairyland. Because I'm like, I'm pretty sure if I remember this from fairy legends, if you eat food from a fairy, from like fairyland, that like you will not crave human food ever again like the food will taste so good you're like well that's ruined all other food is ruined for me forever like all other food that tastes like ash in your mouth or something i think it's like you know like i was like I'm like yeah watch it hilda and like even like some of the imagery like when hilda has a dream and sees her mom like mom but then you see like mushrooms grow out of her mouth and it forms to a to plant that hilda ate to then form into the little girl and it's like that little girl drawing it's like what the hell um yeah, even like her meeting her grandparents was cool. Joanna, like seeing her parents again, and all this. Thing. There's so much. There's so much story here. There's so much story that you could do. 
And that's the thing. Like, I hope the books are still being made. I gotta rebuy some of the like first books because uh, some water damage got to them. So like, they're kind of crusty. I'm not. I don't want to throw them out, but like, they're kind of messed up. So I gotta get some new ones. But uh, I want to get like the Hilda books, like the, the the graphic novels, as well as maybe even like some of the books that are in between. Because I think there's like more lore and stuff in between those as well. Because I want to know like, is there more story here? Because this show is really good. Like, this show is really, really damn good. Also, they're slightly older, so they're slightly taller. That's about it. But, like, like I, I, sh- I should bring that up a little bit. Hilda is slightly taller. It's not really ever brought up, and it's, it's just like, okay, she's aging. So I guess that kind of makes sense, because the idea that they'll be trapped in the fairy world and they'll never age or stuff like that. But this is so good. And honestly, I'm, it's giving me some ideas for certain things to uh for for owl town with the uh, the fairy mists and all that because there is a magical re- man it's funny because I'm, I'm thinking of, like all the time i've spent like with lore and shit in owl town and i've only gotten three episodes out and i'm like god right you guys don't even know what the hell two offs are <laughs> you don't even know what two offs are even though one has already appeared in the show um <laughs> appeared in the episode but yeah, um, this show is great. Like, legitimately, like, so great. Like, it's so damn good. And I, if, if this is your first time watching, I'm sorry I spoiled as far as, I, hopefully you left and went to watch the show and came back and used this, if this is the first video you've ever seen of mine. Um, this show is amazing. I legitimately love it. The writing is good. Again, the mystery was really good. It paced itself so well throughout this whole little season. And it's only eight episodes too, but it's funny because the last, I see why though, because the episode eight is an hour, an hour, like 15 minutes long. It's its like own little movie. I think it's like probably like 20 minutes shy of the actual Hilda movie of the, the troll king of the mountain king. Um, God, I want to rewatch the entire series now. Uh, Cause I'm sure I missed some. I'm sure, like, cause again, I was like, "Crap, who the hell was Gail?" I'm pretty sure she was like the weather lady who was dealing with magic shit. And then, like, I think she got like pulled through the Puka world. And then, like, it, it, and then she opened a Puka a hole, a Puka hole within a Puka hole, and like that sent her to like a Fey world, I think. But uh, yeah, there's so much more story they could do here, and I'm excited. This and like, I I want to see more of it. I'm gonna. I'm borrowing some. I'm going to definitely use some ideas and stuff like that, especially with things like, yeah. But, you know, tell me in the comments below. Thanks for watching. If you're true, it is I've done. Links are on my face. Subscription buttons are on there. So I'll your videos. Hopefully you enjoy this. I got two egg. It's great. I, actually, I hope the Mystery Shack makes, like, the Thunderbird. That'd be kind of neat. But thanks for watching your videos, and we will. See you later. God, this show is so damn good. It mixes so many cool mythologies together. And, like, it gives you, like, the actual mythology stuff with, like, again, like, fairies and all that. And I was like, holy shit, that's so cool. And I was like, God.